Howdy, Ags. Welcome to Aggie Growth Hacks, the podcast sponsored by the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship at Texas A&M, where we help entrepreneurs improve their business, connect with other Aggie entrepreneurs, and support one another. I'm your host, Greg Martin, Fighting Texas Aggie Class of 2001. And I'm your co-host, Chris Hunter, Fighting Texas Aggie Class of 1998. Whoop! Well, we got a little story for you, Ags. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well on the Texas A&M campus. Max Darrell, Fighting Texas A class of 2018, is the founder of The Reach Project. This is a nonprofit that he started while he was an undergrad student at AM. The Reach Project serves, educates, and empowers essential Aggies, and they do this by mobilizing student, government, and business leaders and empowering them through empathy and listening. So pass it back and listen up to Max as he shares some really good bull. Welcome back, Ags. This episode has a super special place in my heart. Max, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for doing what you do and sharing your story and sharing your business with us today. Ags, if you do not know Max and you're not connected with him on social media, you need to. I'm not going to take away his thunder, but Max, thank you so much for joining us and being here today. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for the opportunity and thanks for having me on the podcast. Well, Max, you're fighting Texas A class of 2018. So not too far removed from being a student at AM. And and your job keeps you, you're probably on campus now more than you were even when as a student. But what what do you miss about being a student at AM? That's a wonderful question. You know, I think uh the proximity to the Aggie spirit. You know, the Aggie spirit is in everyone. But when you're on that campus and you're surrounded by 70,000 students who are like-minded, reaching for the same goals, all drinking the same Kool-Aid and bleeding maroon, uh, there's something really special about that. And, and one thing that I think really stands out above the rest is just being able to spend time in the MSC flag room listen to a fellow Aggie hop on the piano, fill up the whole hallway with some beautiful music, and everyone's just sitting there vibing and enjoying the time. Uh, I don't know. There's something really special about Aggie Land, And although I am on campus all the time, uh, being a, a, a professional, if you will, rather than a student changes the dynamic a little bit, but it's still a beautiful place to be. Love it. Absolutely love that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the REACH project and, you know, why are you so passionate about it? Of course, of course. So uh, the REACH project is a wonderful nonprofit organization that I launched as an undergrad at Texas A&M. Uh, while going to school, getting started, it was pretty hard for me. You know, I got real sick before coming to school. I've recovered from that sickness and, and dove into my freshman year and was pretty anxious. But uh, it was amazing. The person who really showed me what the Aggie spirit was and extended that that olive branch out was actually a food service employee. And so the whole concept of what we do is uh, connecting students to serve those who serve us. And so the crux of it is, is we provide students an opportunity to practice their technical skills, uh, develop their soft skills, and enhance their capacity for empathy, all while providing access to the essential Aggies, uh, to tools and resources they need to overcome that multi-generational poverty cycle and achieve their fullest potential, just like we all want to do in Aggie land. Well, Max, you said so much in that, and that was that was so succinct, and I, and I love that. But let's kind of dive into just one small aspect of that. So what are some of the, the services that you bring together to help these essential Aggies in helping their business and helping them do what they do? Most definitely. So uh, it all started with health. Um, that's where we kind of found the lowest hanging fruit in a way to start building some reputation in the community. Uh, but it's really started to grow some legs and really kind of blossom from here. And some of our latest programs are around home ownership and uh, entrepreneurial education. A big passion of ours was to help families make ends meet. And so we found that many families had side hustles. You know, they were mowing grass or creating care packages or cooking food that they're selling from their home. And, you know, the idea of us being able to provide students to wrap around and support uh, fellow Aggies to be successful uh, was truly amazing. And one thing I want to point out is, you know, although we serve the essential Aggies, and that is really the forefront of what we do, uh, we have seen a huge impact in the students that we work with as well. You know, not only are they building these skills that make them more competitive in the workforce, uh, but we're opening their eyes to the bigger world and helping them build empathy. And so when they become the leaders, which all Aggies inevitably do in their field, 
uh, they will hopefully be more empathetic. And so it's been amazing to kind of see this dual effect that we've been able to create here at Aggieland. Okay, Max, so I'm intrigued. You've said in the last 30 seconds, you said empathy three times. Why is teaching empathy? Why is demonstrating empathy? Why is leading in empathy? Why is that so important to you and and the REACH Project? That's a great question. I think empathy is uh, one of the most powerful uh, states of mind that anyone can have. You know, whether it's in your personal life and building relationships with someone, even a family member or a stranger, being able to put yourself in their shoes and understand where they're coming from, it helps you personally better understand the world and better understand yourself. And so if you can be empathetic in every relationship that you have, the odds are that those relationships will be stronger and more fruitful in the long run. But when thinking about it from a business perspective, empathy is also incredibly important because who drives our businesses? Our customers, right? So if we don't understand what our customers want, what our customers need, then we're not going to be able to provide them a product that they're going to use. And if we want to be successful, we have to have that buy-in from that customer. And so I think when thinking about empathy in that business field, I think some of the leading companies you see out there are the ones who are empathetic and putting themselves in the shoes of their customer, not only when defining the, the sources or defining the products that they provide, but even in their company culture, you know, young people these days, they want to know that the company they're buying something from believes in something, stands up for something, cares about something. And so I think empathy it at first was kind of seen just as a personal sphere. Uh, but now I think empathy is starting to break into that professional sphere. And I think those combination of thoughts is what's going to make our world a better place. I love that. And I love how you're helping Aggies and all these future leaders and and just learn that. And how do you teach that? How do you teach empathy? How do you get them to understand that? That's a great question. And to be honest, there's not a formula that works for everyone. But what we like to do is we like to take students and expose them to the reality on the ground, right? We think we found a really unique niche. We have found a personification of the multi-generational poverty cycle, but that personification is someone in our immediate lives, Someone that as a college student, you see day in and day out. Maybe they cleaned your dorm room. Maybe they served you breakfast. Maybe they came in and fixed the projector in your classroom where you were not able to start class because the projector wasn't working. And so instead of having this kind of abstract concept of poverty being across the tracks or, you know, maybe in the back of a Walmart, you know, we have created an opportunity for it to be someone who is in your backyard someone who is impacting your life immediately. And so one of my favorite programs is what we do is uh, we bring students and student orgs to break rooms. We go to custodial break rooms intentionally. We bring the same students every single month over the course of the year, and we break bread. We listen to stories. We learn about trials, tribulations, and hardships, not only of the essential Aggie, but we empower the students to tell the essential Aggie their trials, tribulations, and hardships, and it creates empathy on both sides. And it's amazing. When those relationships are built, really everything else is done by the student, right? They have the passion. They have the energy. They now have a new friend that they didn't have before. And so they're going to do all that they can to honor that friend and support that friend. And so, of course, there's not a perfect formula for this exposure, but I do think it's a combination of making it extremely tangible, something that students can identify and recognize in their daily lives, but then also that forced exposure, bringing them into a break room and helping generate conversations so that they're getting these stories from the horse's mouth. You know, when talking about someone living 50 miles away from campus and having to wake up at 2.30 in the morning and then drive that 50 miles to get to campus, or the idea that someone has to carpool with three or four people to get to, get to work, and that's their only option. You can talk about this, but when you hear it come from the horse's mouth, that's when the understanding starts to kick in. And so it's really all about building relationships, helping people connect with people who don't look like you, don't sound like you, and don't come from the same background as you do. And that really creates a really beautiful relationship and situation for everyone involved. Wow, that is so cool. That is so very cool. So switching gears a tiny bit, can you tell us a little bit, was there ever a tipping point on the REACH project and and really when it started to really take off? There was. And it's it's so funny and interesting. I've been thinking about this a lot. And unfortunately, uh, I'm going to have to say it was COVID. You know, when COVID hit, 
not only was there immediate layoffs of about 1,400 essential employees, and so there was an immediate need that had to be filled. Not only did it provide us a concentrated area for delivering service, uh, but it also, I think, created this movement across the country of an appreciation for what we call an essential employee. So it really opened the eyes of, of really the entire country of these individuals who had to continue to go into work, who had to continue to put themselves in danger and their families in danger so that we could survive. And so for us to be able to lean in on that notion while also really galvanizing the student body to serve the essential Aggies, you know, when COVID first hit out, we raised $165,000 from students wow. to wow. buy meals from local restaurants uh-huh. and give to families that were laid off. And our average donation size was $12. You know, it was student run, student generated, and it just took off. And so while that, you know, ability to serve really was amplified, not only was the empathy easier to access, uh, but then we started to build the trust in our community. And so the families really appreciated that we stepped in and stepped up and really started to adopt the REACH family as part of their own. And so from then, we just started to really learn about needs and pain points and find out ways that we could support. And so I think it was a combination of not only the pandemic and this kind of awakening, if you will, of around the essential Aggie, but it was also the trust and respect and rapport that we built with the community that we are serving, uh, which really just created this explosion, right? From there, in the past two years, we've built over 34 programs. We now serve over 900 families annually. Wow, we work with wow. about 400 students and 180 student orgs every calendar year. And so it has just really been on the up and up ever since then. And I feel a little guilty. You know, I, I shouldn't be excited about COVID and I'm not. I, I appreciate the weight. I appreciate the, the traumatic experience that it caused in our community, uh, but it really was the turning point for the service industry. And, and those who were able to kind of rise up um, ha- have really seen a, a huge momentum behind them. I think that it was a kind of a combination, but but really that point in time is what did it for us. Max, it is so amazing to hear how you, yeah, because the REACH project was started obviously before 2020, but it had a framework in place for you to be able to leverage the community, leverage that empathy, leverage that understanding that a lot of us were going through in 2020 to serve the essential workers, to serve the essential Aggies. And because of that, you guys are growing so fast in the reach and the impact and the ability to speak into those families is phenomenal. But with growth comes challenges, comes problems. What What's the biggest problem that you're facing right now? And, and how are you hacking it? That's a great question. And uh, as cliche as it sounds, uh, we're just growing too fast. Uh, we, we have been able to build such a rapport and such a respect in, in the community that we serve that not only are our programs bursting at the seams with applicants and signups, but we have more and more community leaders and community members reaching out, identifying other needs that we would be able to support with. And so it's kind of a curse and a blessing. You know, we, we have built the respect and the rapport within the community that they trust us and they know that we can and we will do everything we can to support them. But Obviously, you know, when you're a startup organization and you don't have a full staff, it's pretty challenging. And so the first thing that we did uh, was really think through, well, how can we empower members of the community that we serve to help build our capacity? And so uh, we created a community leaders board. Uh, We went through and identified individuals who have been through our program successfully, who understand what we're trying to accomplish. And we offered them an opportunity to be a part of this shared leadership board Um, That would not only propel these individuals and their leadership ability, but help the REACH project expand our capacity. And so that has been a huge, huge success, a huge success. We've also hosted some fundraisers. I've gotten a little bit better getting out of that programmatic fundraiser schematic and getting more into a traditional nonprofit fundraising scheme. And we are actually hiring our first employee this past uh, Wednesday. Congratulations. We actually, thank you. We offered our first employee. It was a, a miracle, to be frank. A lady uh, moved here from San Diego, California, uh, was looking to engage in the community she was in. Uh, and it was just one of those things that <laughs> made too much sense and was too perfect. Um, So we're bringing her on to help build that capacity as well. And then also leveraging students. You know, I think one thing that a lot of people take for granted 
is college students are amazing, right? Their capacity, their heart, their passion. I mean, we were all there. We all knew what we could do as college kids. And so uh, another thing that we've really done is empowered college students. We started a student organization that has a leadership structure that empowers those students to come in and support the REACH project as a whole. So really, I think the hack was leaning in on our supporters, leaning in on our community, and empowering them to take leadership roles uh, so that we could build that capacity and continue to meet the needs of our community. Wow, that is so awesome. And it's so awesome to hear, you know, that, and we all know this, Aggies are pretty awesome, right? And for the Aggie students to be stepping up into those roles is just phenomenal. That gives me hope for our future. And for, you know, my son literally is applying this month for Texas A&M. So, I mean, he hopefully will be there next year and I'm going to tell him he needs to be part of the REACH project. We would love to have him. That would be awesome. So one of the things that we talk about here, you know, on Aggie Growth Hacks is, you know, your big, hairy, audacious goal. This is your, your five to 10 year moonshot, your BHAG, right? What is your BHAG for the REACH project? I love that question. And it's so funny you asked that because I was actually uh, lucky enough to have an interview with John Sharp uh, for his around Texas. And he asked me that exact same question. And then I get the questions from y'all the next day and it's like, Oh wait, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Homework's done. uh, Exactly. (laughs) No, it was perfect. But the BHAG or the big hairy audacious goal that we have is actually what we call a reach for home village. And so currently the reach project system is providing services where you work, or where you live. And so a majority of what we do is actually here on the Texas A&M campus. Uh, We do honor where you live, uh, but that's really more, you know, healthcare oriented. We'll bring shots to the community. We'll do a health fair in the community. Uh, We'll do community listening events or a community fair. Um, But what we're trying to get to is actually providing these 34 programs within the built environment. We have this vision for a three-step a transitional housing process where families will be able to triage their current lifestyles, reinvest in themselves and their families so that they can break through that multi-generational poverty cycle. You know, start with foundations, go through ESL, GED, financial literacy, then go into credit score, credit repair, you know, leadership opportunities. And then finally, stage three, while you're building that savings capacity and repairing that credit, we want to provide you access to upscaling opportunities. We want to get you to a place where you have the resources and tools you need to increase what you can earn. And, and the idea would be after that three-phase situation, you pop out on the other end as a homeowner or a business owner. And so we are actively working with the College of Architecture. We actually had a piece of land that was just donated to us. Um, and so that is more of a three-year goal. But that five to 10-year goal, that big audacious goal we're going for, we're going to replicate this at every Texas A&M system school in Texas. We, we wow. have fully uh, committed to our growth strategy going through that Texas A&M system. Um, we're actually coordinating a conversation with leadership at these other campuses to get the process started because uh, we truly believe we have created a model here at Texas A&M that will support the affordable housing, and really the essential employees across the entire country. And so we're in partnership with AM to create this model and then spread it nationwide. Start First starting with land-grant institutions and then go into really any other school that has young, ambitious students that want to serve and make their world a better place, which I'm pretty sure is probably almost every college in the country. Max, I think that I Chris would agree with me. That is one of the best BHAGs that we have had. And it's not just because you, you got a you know preview with, with Chancellor Sharp, but seriously, the impact that, that I can see the REACH project yeah. having across our Texas A&M system, across our state, across our nation, across the globe. It's like, okay, yeah, that's doable. Let's do it. So congratulations. I can't wait to encourage and see and, and support you as you grow. Thank you. I appreciate that. And and one thing I just want to emphasize is not only are we having profound impact on families, right? We've created six homeowners out of custodians. We've launched 25 Black-owned businesses, four Black-run 501c3s, a 501c4. We've helped diagnose cancer and get breast cancer removed. We've helped diagnose diabetes and get people on health care plans. But we're having just a profound impact on students. You know, a quick story I I love telling is a young man named Logan. Uh, He was a chemical engineer. He came to Texas A&M with the ambition of making as much money as possible. And that's all he had his mindset to. Well, when COVID hit, 
he got out of the classroom. He realized there was something bigger going on. And he came and started volunteering at that meal distribution we talked about a little bit earlier. As time continued to pass and our relationship kind of grew, our friendship became a more solidified. He ended up getting more and more involved. And long story short, uh, this past year, uh, this past May when he graduated, uh, instead of taking the six-figure salary job that he was offered as a sophomore, uh, he asked that company to put it on hold for two years. Uh, and he's actually in Ghana, Africa, as we speak, teaching English and science to underserved children. And then when he returns in two years, he's picking that six-figure salary job back up. And I would venture to say he's going to be a bit more empathetic with the, what he does in his community and what he does with his career. And so I just can't really emphasize enough how it's really a dual impact. You know, we are seeing profound, profound changes in the families we serve, but equally as impactful to the students that make this all possible. So uh, I think we really do have a nationwide movement on our hands, uh, just trying to make sure we're doing it the right way. So cool. I mean, Max, I, I think we could go on for hours, just the passion that you have and what you're doing and the stories if you haven't started writing a book, you need to you need to start <laughs> doing that. All right, Max, we're heading into the lightning round. Um, you have been dropping so much good wisdom and nuggets. Um, let's try to keep these to a minute, a minute or less. So let me ask you, what is your favorite hack? It could be a personal hack. It could be a business hack. It could be an empathy hack. What is it that we can learn from you? That's a great question. I've been thinking about this and I want to give you two and I'll keep them short. Personal hack. Wake up early, make your bed, go for a walk. Every day that I do that, I have a better day. My head's clear. I feel some confidence. I've accomplished some goals. I think that is one of the best things that you can do for yourself every single day. And ever since I've started doing that, I've noticed a huge difference. The second would be an empathy hack. Be a good listener. Everyone wants to be heard. Yes. Everyone wants to be seen. If you can provide someone the platform to be heard and to be seen, you'll never understand the full length of impact you've had on that person. And that pays off not only in personal, but in professional realms as well. So be a good listener. That is, that is one of the best hacks that I've ever, ever experienced. I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And I know me personally, I'm probably the worst at that, but you know, um, that's awesome. So next question, what is the favorite advice that you have ever been given and 98 bonus points for how you applied it? <laughs> oh, come on. Give him 2018. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I think the best advice I've ever been given is uh, don't be afraid to be told no. You never know unless you ask. And mm. always be willing to stand up for and ask for something that you believe in. And so the best way I can explain it is really how Reach got started. You know, uh, there's a lady in the College of Architecture, one of my favorite people named Dr. Van Zandt. And I caught wind that she was uh, really passionate about affordable housing. Well, I just started showing up at her office. And it was so funny because to this day, she still tells the story that she gave me some crazy homework, quote unquote, to see if I was serious and to see if I'd come back. And so she kept kind of giving me these barriers, kind of telling me no without telling me no. Uh, but I personally, I took it as a competition. I said, you, you think I can't do it? Okay, I'll be back. I'll do it. And so I've used it there, but really in everything that I do, you know, if I'm looking for a sponsor for a program, unless I hear the words N-O, you know, I'm calling you back. You know, I'll call you three, four, five, seven, ten 10 times, whatever it takes until you tell me no. You tell me no, I'll be respectful. I'll back up. Uh, but a lot of times people just don't know what's good for them. You got to make sure that you understand and they understand that you have a great opportunity for them. So don't be afraid to ask. Worst case scenario, they say no and you try again next time. All right. Give him the points. I think he I think he deserves that. <laughs> uh, so, so, Max, I'm guessing your superpower is tenacity. Is, is, is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good one. That'd be a good one. I think another one might be uh, listening. You know, I think that's why we've been able to be successful is because I love hearing stories, you know, whether it be Mama Mel at the front desk of Sabisa that let me into her life and opened my eyes to the Central Aggies, or maybe it's the 180 Central Aggies that I went and interviewed that helped me understand just how serious of an issue there was. I think tenacity is a great one. Definitely don't like giving up. Um, but I also think being a good listener, you know, I think that's really, really powerful. Uh, and that's has led to so much success at the Reach Project. It's awesome. Love it. And that's the second time, by the way, that you've given us the listener part. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what gets you out of bed and excited about the REACH project? Oh, well, there's a lot. But I think that the best answer will be the families that we serve. It's amazing to see an individual who is not 
quote unquote, technically an Aggie, you know, might not have gone to A&M, might not have that Aggie ring that is so valuable, um, but still cares and still loves us like we are their family and we are their kids. And so being able to learn these stories, being able to empower people who are beautiful, wonderful people to accomplish things that they never thought was possible is one of the best feelings in the world. And I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, one of the families who came to our class, actually right here, uh, Miss Adrika Turner, uh, she was part of our entrepreneurial cohort. And she told me um, that she never thought she'd be able to be a business owner. Never. You know, she went to jail three times for shoplifting. But she, when she was in jail, she finally made the decision, I am going to do this the right way. And so she came to our class. Uh, she really bought in, did everything she could to learn. Not only has she launched a storefront in Bryant, but uh, she actually called me two days ago and said, Max, reach gave me hope. And I want to turn around and I want to give that hope to other women just like me. I want them to know that it isn't a dead end. There is a life after incarceration and that life does get better. And so the second I heard that, it was like, oh my gosh, you're out there multiplying good. I don't even have to do anything. And so that is why I do what I do. I love the idea of empowering people to do things they never thought was possible and then watching them turn around and empower others to do the same thing. Do you know the name of her storefront in Brian? In, Hair in, with the twist. <laughs> Hair, Hair, Hair with, with the, the twist. twist boutique, and it's just south of downtown Bryan. Uh, it is a wonderful shop, and uh, she's actually in the process of helping her daughter launch a hair boutique, if you will, in the back of that shop. And so she's already multiplied that good, empowering her daughter too. But yes, it's Hair with a Twist boutique. You can find her online, uh, and you can find her just south of downtown Bryan uh, in a beautiful little shop that she just launched, uh, and is just really doing a great job at. That. So powerful. So, so awesome. And I, and I love that story that, like you say, you're multiplying good and, and it came out of the reach project and the passion that y'all have got. So naturally, how can we get in touch with you? How can we get in touch with the people that have gone through the entrepreneur program or anyone who's going through your programs? How can we support Max? How can we support the reach project? How can we mobilize the Aggie network even more? than it is now to get this to everyone who's who's here in this podcast? Oh, I appreciate that question so much. And I'm going to give you two answers. First is for students. Students, if you're out there and you're listening, which I hope you are, uh, take a moment to see the essential Aggies. Help bring these unsung heroes out of the shadows and into the spotlight wh where they deserve to be. Tell them thank you. Ask them how their day is going. You don't understand how big of an impact that one simple conversation will have. When thinking about the REACH project, students and community members, we would love to have your help. We're always looking to expand our team. We're always looking to expand our network. We're looking for mentors for our business owners. We're looking for budget coaches for our families trying to become homeowners. We're looking for board members. We're looking for volunteers. So uh, feel free to reach out via any of the social media platforms. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter. Um, or shoot me an email. My email is max at txreachproject.org. I'm always down for a good conversation. I'm always down for a new idea. And I'm always down for expanding our team. So if, if you feel so inclined, don't be shy. We'd love to have you. Wow, Max, that is so awesome. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge with the Aggie Growth Hack community and Aggie entrepreneurs that are listening to this. And we really appreciate you taking the time out and coming today. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for the opportunity. And one piece of advice for those Aggie entrepreneurs out there, just do it. A lot of times people say no. People say, oh, you can't do it. You don't have the skills or the resources. Just do it. If you don't start, we'll never figure it out. But thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for letting me be a part of the uh, Aggie podcast community. Um, I think that this is a wonderful thing that y'all are doing, and I, I'm proud to be a part of it. Wow. That's all I've got to say so far. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. So I loved max's story and really what the reach project is doing i just absolutely loved what he's all about i know that he dropped a ton of value bombs in this episode what did you think greg well chris honestly there was so much but what really struck me was just max's story itself this is a young man that as an undergraduate was able to look out and to see people, essential Aggies that needed help. 
and he wasn't so focused on himself and so caught up in doing what it is that Aggies do that he was like, look, I can, these people need help and I can help them. I can, I don't know how to start a nonprofit. I don't know where they need help, but I just know they need help and I have the ability to help them. And, and so he just started, he said, yes, he just started moving and the entrepreneur lessons that he learned through that process is just, I mean, it, it just makes me so proud of him and so really humbled to be in a community and to be part of an organization at Texas A&M that we see a need and Aggies help one another and we help each other and just the tenacity that that guy has. I mean, I, I, like I said earlier, I think Max is like a pit bull with a smile. <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he is so calm and he is so wanting to serve you and wanting to get things done that if he latches onto you, you just better say yes when Max comes asking because <laughs> he's not going to let go until he gets what he wants because what he wants is to serve and to help others. And that is so powerful. So, so awesome. So that was, you know, Max himself was my biggest takeaway. <laughs> what what about you, Chris? Well, I wrote a ton of things. I literally, I've I've got an entire page here of little bullet points of things, but the thing that stuck out to me the most was listening, right? How he said it several times, right? How it's important to listen, mm -hmm. right? And to me, what I took away from this was that listening creates empathy. And he talked about empathy quite a bit too, right? So the listening creates empathy. But what I have seen just from this brief conversation with Max is that this is creating a ripple effect, right? Mm -hmm. He yeah. himself is by listening and having empathy and teaching others how to listen and, and have empathy is creating this huge ripple effect. I mean, look at his big, hairy, audacious goal, his BHAG, you know, and where he wants to have the REACH project be at every A&M affiliated system, whatever it's called, <laughs> campus, right? Yep. Um, that's awesome. That's really cool, you know, and the effects that it's already starting to create and ripple out from there is just going to compound the more the more campuses that this goes out to. So I am very impressed by by Max and everything that he has done here with the Reach Project. Hundred percent agree, and and it's so cool that this episode sponsor, you know, our our sponsor, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship, is also connected in with Max and to be able to to help those essential Aggies through entrepreneur education and everything. So. Yeah. It's, it's so cool that the network that we are in and how it all interconnects yes. together. Well, it's the Aggie network, right? I mean, and, and that's what the, really the Aggie network is all about is creating these absolute huge ripples in ourselves, our community, everything It's pretty cool. hundred percent. Well, Ags, that's going to do it for this episode of Aggie Growth Hacks. If you are not connected with Max and the Reach Project, do yourself a favor, connect with him right now. And if you're not connected to Aggie Growth Hacks or Chris or I, do yourself a favor, do us a favor and connect with us. Check out AggieGrowthHacks.com where you can not only hear this episode, but our previous episodes and some of our other great content. We also want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship at Texas A&M University. Since 1999, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship has served as the hub of entrepreneurship for Texas A&M. If you're an Aggie entrepreneur or even a wantrepreneur, head on over to their website to find a program that's right for you. Just go to aggiegrowthhacks.com forward slash McFerrin right now. Well, join us next time when we connect with another great Aggie entrepreneur and learn how they hack their growth. Until then, I'm Chris Hunter. And I'm Greg Martin. Thanks and gig'em.